Hi, we are now going to start off with our modules under geometry and the first topic in geometry that we are going to look at is lines, angles and triangles. Now for this first topic, let's start off with a puzzle. Suppose we look at this wire. We have a wire here. Let's assume this is a wire of length 14 centimeters. Now the objective is we want to use this wire and make as many different triangles as possible. So this wire which is 14 centimeters long needs to be bent into the shape of a triangle and we would like to make as many different triangles as possible. The question is how many triangles are possible using this one wire of 14 centimeter length. We will try and solve this after we go through a few basic concepts under this topic lines angle. A very very important concept that will regularly be used to solve problems would be based on parallel lines and the angles that get formed and what are the properties of these angles. So let's try and understand these. Suppose we look at two parallel lines. Suppose we call them L1 and L2 and if we have a line which cuts these two parallel lines. Suppose we call this as L3. This line which cuts two parallel lines is also called as a transversal. So we have two parallel lines L1 and L2 and we have a transversal which cuts these two parallel lines. Now we can see that several angles would get formed here and I am labeling them as ABCD, EF and GH. Now what are the different kinds of angles that we need to consider with respect to these parallel lines? So the different kinds of angles that get formed, let's look at the first type which are called as corresponding angles. Now which are the corresponding angles in this diagram that we are looking at? Angle A and angle E would be corresponding angles. Angle B and angle F would be corresponding angles. Angle D and angle H would be corresponding angles and angles C and angle G would be corresponding angles. So there are four pairs of corresponding angles and the property of corresponding angles is that corresponding angles are always equal to each other. A second type that we can look at would be called as alternate angles. Now in school very often alternate angles are taught as angles which form a Z. So if we look at which are the alternate angles here, we would get angle D and angle F. This forms a Z and angle D and F are alternate angles. Similarly, angles C and E are alternate angles. So there are two pairs of alternate angles, D and F, C and E. And once again, the property with respect to alternate angles is that alternate angles are equal. The third type that we need to consider would be interior angles. Now which are the interior angles? D and E are called as interior angles and C and F are also called as interior angles. So there are two pairs of interior angles D and E, C and F and a property for interior angles is that interior angles are supplementary which means D plus E is equal to 180 degrees. Similarly, C plus F is equal to 180 degrees. And finally, the fourth type that we look at would be called as vertically opposite angles. Now, vertically opposite angles are always equal. Whenever you have two straight lines intersecting, you have vertically opposite angles. So if I look at L1 and L3, which intersects at this point, then A and C are vertically opposite angles, B and D are vertically opposite angles and they are always equal to each other. Similarly, E and G are vertically opposite angles, F and H are vertically opposite angles and they are also equal to each other. So to summarize, corresponding angles, there are four pairs and they are equal. Alternate angles, there are two pairs and they are equal. Interior angles, there are two pairs and they are supplementary. Vertically opposite, there are four pairs and they are equal. We can build from here and arrive at a few more properties. So for example, if we consider A and G, 
Some people also call these as exterior alternate angles. A and G would be equal to each other and we can very easily prove this. A and E would be equal because they are corresponding. E and G would be equal because they are vertically opposite. Hence A and G are equal. So using these four basic types and using the properties, we can actually move on and arrive at a few more properties and these are extremely useful when we are solving problems related to angles. Let's look at one more property with respect to parallel lines and transversals. Suppose we now consider three parallel lines. So if these three L1, L2 and L3, suppose they are parallel and if we have two transversals, suppose L4 and L5 cutting these three parallel lines and if they cut them at these points A, B, C and X, Y, Z then there is a property with respect to the lengths of these intercepts. Now when you have a transversal L4 which has cut these three parallel lines L1, L2, L3 then you have intercepts given as AB, BC. There is a very important property very useful with respect to the lengths of the intercepts and that property goes as AB upon BC which means the ratio of these two intercepts is equal to XY upon YZ. So whenever you have three parallel lines and then you have two transversals cutting these three parallel lines and intercepts are formed then the ratio of the intercepts on this one transversal would be equal to the ratio of the corresponding intercepts on the other transversal. Once again extremely useful when we are solving problems.